Hello guys, it's Chris from National Crow. Uh, as we are preparing for the daily training on the 8th of July, uh, we are on site today and these are some of the things that are going to be addressed during the uh, training session. Here we are in the Lucena field um, and as you know, it's a very strategic as the native farmer to have to, uh, Lucene or any other form of, you know, your protein uh, uh, crop. Why? because the most expensive component of your feed is your protein and if you are to buy probably on a daily basis it becomes so expensive if you have a form of where you can grow uh, these legume crops like we said it cuts significantly on your uh, feeding cost now a lot of people ask now how do we do how do you go by it uh, this establishment is an excellent uh, you know piece of land to demonstrate how you can grow your lucerne and you're also going to be able to appreciate how you process it, how you mix it with other food ingredients. Um, and it's, it's not only important for, for dairy farmers, even for the beef farmers. Uh, you can, you know, at a farm, you can have a small piece of land like this, where you irrigate, you have your lucerne, and you mix it with other ingredients. As you see here, it's very lush, uh, very lush and green. So what you do is, you irrigate it depending on the water holding capacity of your soil sometimes on a weekly basis sometimes after every two weeks but how you do it you can come in with a tractor you cut it the way we do when we are cutting hay then all fertilizers and water equal and fine you should be able to cut you know to harvest your lucena maybe twice uh, in a month or once every every month depending on, on the on the capacity of your soils but then Largely, it's very strategic and it significantly cuts your, uh, your feeding costs. And this is a must, especially for, for dairy farmers. Now, there's, there's a lot, in most cases, people come in with excuses. They say, we don't have land. Uh, our farm is very small, so we can't do this and so on. Look at this portion of land. It's not, it's not big. But this is because, because it's a legume crop, so you are harvesting everything from the stem, from the, uh, the, the leaves and so on. A hectare of lucerne is able to actually sustain quite a huge head of either your beef or your dead heads. As you will see, if you attend the training session, uh, we are going to demonstrate how from how you grow it, how you harvest it, how you mix it with other uh, feed ingredients, eventually, you know, to come up with a, a, a full uh, total mix duration for your, for your dead animals. So see you on the 8th of July as we are going to discuss more around how to do your business how to do your dairy, how to be growing fodder crops, how to complement with other, you know, feed ingredients, and how to manage, you know, the overall, you know, head, uh, uh, you know, the overall, you know, dairy head for your business. Right. Uh, so now uh, on the training, uh, we're also going to address uh, issues around how you manage your calves. This is the most critical and starting point for your business. If you don't get it right on the management of your cows, obviously, it means your heifers, your cows are not going to be uh, good. So here you see, just briefly, you see that the, the, the pains, the cows' pains, they are very smart. They are still very susceptible, susceptible to a couple of, you know, bacterial infections and so, and you don't want any deity around them. And so it must be clean and smart. And also, you know, when it's too cold, have some form of, you know, ensuring that there is adequate, uh, warmth for them you see here there's a tendency where there are dead animals to there's a tendency for flies to you know just congest and so so there are fly traps here as you see what happens if you do not if you do not ensure that you have these ones you are going to have a lot of flies and they start spreading a lot of diseases around your calves you don't want that cleaning cleaning must be done you know regularly so that you know there's no accumulation of waste Otherwise, if a lot of waste accumulates, you will lose your calves. And, you know, that's losing money and so So, how do you design the, the, your calves, uh, the pains for the calves? Uh, how do you manage it? How do you cite it in a way that it does not give, give you management uh, challenges? Uh, we are going to address uh, all, those, um, all those things. And the drainage, how do you put the drainage system? Was it, more often, you are, not, you, are, you are supposed to clean here. You know with water and so you don't want the water that comes from the pens now to accumulate sometimes there can be an outbreak in one pen you don't want a disease to start you know spreading from one pen to to another so the drainage system must communicate with everything 
uh, so that you know you 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 make sure that you do not breed diseases and you do not transmit diseases from one a calf to uh, to another. Right. So what you see here, uh, these are your dairy heifers. Uh, they are host and breed, and uh, this is the most critical component of your dairy uh, production. Why? Because how you're going to manage your heifers actually affects what you are going to get from them when they are old. And so if you miss it here, uh, definitely you are also going to miss it when you are at a point where you are calving now and you are making your animals. So now, uh, on the 8th of July, we are also going to uh, deeply talk around how do you manage your heifers uh, when they are at this age, one and a half years, two years. How do you manage them before bullying? How do you manage them uh, during uh, the bullying season? when they eventually get to be built, built, how do you manage them after bullying? And so, because all these processes affect your, you know, your, your productivity. Uh, and it does not start on the heifers. We are also going to talk around, uh, about how you manage the cows. Because um, dairy production is quite a sensitive uh, value chain where you need to get everything right from how you manage the cows until when they are bullying heifers from there during the uh, calving processes. Uh, young cows and old cows sometimes need to be managed differently uh, right through to you know how you manage the milking process how you manage the calling process the bullying uh, are you going to be using bulls uh, are you going to be using artificial insemination um, are you going to be probably borrowing maybe a bull or semen from certain uh, bulls or certain uh, other farmers who are doing probably uh, the same breed with yours. We are also going to look at uh, you know the implications of choosing a breed. You see here, these are hostings, and naturally these are the you know high yielding. You know it's a high yielding breed, but we have a number of other you know uh, dairy cattle breeds like your Jays, your Alshire, um, uh, and your Red Dane. Uh, a lot of breeds. Now we are going to be addressing issues around which breed is based. And under what circumstances should one choose a certain breed uh, against probably another breed and so on. It's not always profitable probably to go for the hostings. They are big, lots of milk, but they're also demanding they need a lot of feed. But there's, a, there's there are circumstances where it's very wise and it's very, you know, it's, it's profitable to go for the hostings. There are also circumstances where it's very wise and profitable to go for the smaller breeds like your Jay-Z. Uh, we are going to be addressing all those things. And on the breeding side, it's not about the yield. It's also about the quality uh, of the milk. Uh, when, when we talk of the quality, we are talking of the components of milk, your butterfat content, uh, etc., things like that. Now, depending on when you are where you are taking your milk to, some buyers probably prefer you know, milk with more with a high butterfat content. Some markets prefer milk with low butterfat content depending on what they intend to produce from that milk. So we are also going to discuss uh, uh, all those things like uh, if you are targeting a specific market with these soil requirements, this is probably the best breed for you. If you are targeting a market that requires this, this is the best breed for you. Now, another important thing we are going to be addressing is opportunities around the dairy, uh, around you know, dairy production, especially here in Zimbabwe. At uh, a national level, you see we are not producing enough milk. There's quite a huge demand of milk to a point where sometimes we are forced to import milk from other countries like South Africa and so. Now, what are the opportunities and what are those excuses that people normally bring forward yet they come from, you know, misguided, you know, uh, perspectives and so. So we are going to address those things. We say, as a farmer, you can run a very profitable dairy entity with only five animals. You can run a profitable uh, you know, dairy entity with 100 animals, with 1,000 animals, but now there are certain things, there are a lot of things that, that differ now, uh, depending on the production system you are using in the target market and probably the target yields and scale. We are going to be dissecting all those things, uh, which eventually should allow us to see you know, the opportunities. I can guarantee you that there are quite a lot of opportunities in the dairy, in the dairy industry here in Zimbabwe, quite a lot of them. But sometimes people are just hesitant to tap into because, you know, 
There are a lot of misconceptions around how you manage your animals, the marketing. We have gone to a couple of places where people ask, ah, is there market for, 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 for milk? Now we, we are, you are going to see, and the good thing about the 8th of July training is that key stakeholders in the dairy industry are also going to be there, where if you are not sure about the price of milk per, per liter or per kg, the buyers are going to be there and they are telling us that this is what we want. Uh, this is how much we pay for a milk with this. Now, some people are afraid because they say, ah, oh, we are told there are a lot of diseases like mastitis. Uh, sometimes, you know, they, they count this thing like somatic cell count. If my milk does not meet these standards, then I do not get much from it. And so we are also going to be addressing the health management of your dairy animals. How do you do it right so that you get milk that's our best quality milk that gives you, you know, good money on the market. So this is an opportunity not to miss. Why? Because we're not only going to dwell on the technical aspects, but you're also going to address the business aspect of it. How do you become a profitable dairy farmer? Right from breeding, uh, in as much as one might have a breed that this is a hosting, it's, it's just a one breed like this, but how, if you are doing uh, your dairy business over time, you want to be improving your head. How do you select your animals? How do you tell that this is the, a, a good, you know, dairy animal? How do you tell that uh, this is going to give me more milk and stuff like that? Now, I'll tell you one thing. It's a very trick with dairy animals, unlike beef. In beef animals, it's very easy to say this bull is big. Uh, it has lots of muscle. So if I can select it, I'm guaranteed that my heifers or my the offsprings are also going to be big. Now with the dairy, we want to improve on the milk yield. And in most cases, it starts from, you know, it starts from selecting a bull that's going to lead you to having, you know, more milk. But how do we do it? Because a bull does not produce milk. So now we need to employ in some, some special, you know, you know, selection methods and breeding, uh, you know, strategies where we are indirectly selecting animals that are going to give us more milk. Yet the animals we are selecting do not give milk at themselves. It's like if we are to select the best bull, we cannot milk a bull. But we are indirectly selecting a bull, targeting to have heifers that are going to be producing uh, more milk and so. And sometimes uh, you are only going to be able to tell that this animal is giving me more milk after it has calved already. So you don't want to wait sometimes. You have heifers like this. You don't want to wait for five years for you then to say, Ah, now I see this is the best animal. So, you need to employ in some selection uh, strategies uh, where you should be able to pick when the animal is young like this, that, ah, this is a good animal. It's going to give me uh, more, mi more milk. Uh, how do you tell now? So, we are going to look at all those things you look at when you are selecting a dead animal, right from the heifers, uh, the cows, uh, the bulls, and stuff like that. Uh, a lot of questions are raised. How do I breed my animals? Should I buy a bull? Should I go artificial insemination away? We are going to be addressing all those things. Why should you adopt this system? What are the benefits? What are the pros and what are the cons? Uh, so it's going to be very, it's going to be very interesting. And uh, this is an opportunity uh, not to miss. Right, these are the animals now are waiting for milking. And this is the making parlor, as you see here. Uh, so when you come to the training, you also have an opportunity to appreciate um, how you design or how you site your milking parlor. Uh, of course, this is now for a larger scale. Uh, you also have an opportunity to appreciate a design or a parlor, a, a design of, for, for a parlor you can have for at a small scale level, uh, maybe for 20 animals, for, for 10 animals or so. It does not always follow that it has to be expensive as this. You can have a design that fits, you know, the level of your uh, production or your production scale, starting with even two animals, uh, 10 animals, 20 animals are going up like that. Uh, this is very massive, of course, and it's also computerized, as you will see inside here. Uh, a lot of things happen here. The office is there. Uh, the milk is checked as soon as it comes from here. There are tanks there, collection tanks there, where the temperature, even somatic cell kind, all those things that are critical and important, we are able to check them from uh, the office down there. And also it's 
it's good to appreciate, you know, like any farm, your office must be close to, you know, where the operations are. So that it's easy. You don't need to start traveling kilometers to see what's happening on the ground. So, so it's going to be very interesting uh, because a lot of things are going to be addra addressed from the technical production side, the design and infrastructure, uh, the feed formulation, uh, how you manage the pastures, how you do the breeding, the selection, uh, everything, you know, that's important for you to become a profitable uh, dairy, uh, dairy farmer. So this is an opportunity not to, not to, not to miss.